Diabotical is finally upon us in the form of a closed beta. But whether you're playing in the closed beta, an open beta later on, or perhaps the full release of the game years and years after the launch of this video, one thing will always remain the same and will always be true. Strafe jumping and circle jumping are the most important ways of getting around and not being a bot in Diabotical. Let's build up your fundamentals piece by piece. As you're watching the footage here, you'll see me as I'm walking in a straight line towards the bottom center of your screen, you'll see a speedometer that is listing my speed in units of UPS or units per second. As I walk in a straight line with no mouse movement, you'll see that my walking speed is 320 UPS. But as I start turning my mouse while walking on the ground, you'll see that my speed breaks the speed cap, that I go beyond 320, and that in some instances I hit well over 400 UPS. So, this is the basis of what is called circle jumping. What you want to do is basically learn how to walk on the ground and hold forward plus either left or right while moving your mouse in that same direction at a specific rate that is going to be dependent upon your field of view, upon your mouse sensitivity and things like that. So I can't tell you move at exactly this speed, but practice with this speedometer enabled. Practice moving your mouse and just simply literally walking in circles on the ground. And try to figure out that one particular mouse movement speed that is going to max out the speed that you get to on the ground. Once you learn that and you get comfortable with getting that UPS well over 400 consistently and you can like do circles, like full circles, half circles, quarter circles, whatever is appropriate for your mouse, all you have to do is simply press the jump button and that's it. And you have successfully performed the basics of what is a circle jump. Now, are you ever going to go more than like maybe a quarter turn of your mouse for a circle jump and practice in a real game? No. But the idea here is that what you're doing is by holding forward, holding left or right, and moving your mouse in that same direction, you are breaking that speed cap on the ground. And then if you want to maintain that speed, you simply jump. And then continue jumping, and continue jumping, and you will maintain that speed and never ever go down. Even if you let go of your mouse, you let go of movement directions, and you just hold the jump button, you'll just continuously jump, 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 jump at that same speed in units per second. In my experience so far, playing arena FPS like Diabotical, Quake, and Reflex, I find it very difficult to go more than a few moments without circle jumping. It's a thing that you will find yourself always, always doing just to move that little bit faster around the arena. It's critically important. Literally every professional and semi-professional player of arena FPS for the last 20 plus years will tell you the same thing, that strafe jumping and circle jumping is, I mean, it's, it's, it's a requirement. Hard stop. It is a full requirement. If you are not doing it and you're not doing it well, chances are you are not going to have what it takes to be that top level player. This is just such a fundamental thing. It's just, it's non-negotiable is what it is. Strafe jumping, on the other hand, is kind of a modified form of bunny hopping. So basically what you're going to be doing here is, for the sake of learning, what I want you to do is, you're going to do a circle jump to get yourself some momentum and kind of start us off with some speed. From that point, I want you just to hold the space bar down and don't let it go because this game has auto bunny hopping. So it will automatically make you jump the instant that you touch the ground. Now, conventional wisdom states that you really shouldn't do this because it has potential to hurt your speed. And it there are other considerations as well, which are a little bit outside the scope of this video. But for the sake of learning as a first time user of strafe jumping, I think you should just hold the space bar down. And once you get comfortable with the technique and you get the muscle memory down, then you can practice manually jumping every single time. But for the time being, we're going to assume that you're going to do a circle jump and start getting momentum in a certain direction. And you're just going to hold space bar from that and all the other inputs are assuming you're just holding space bar. So from this position of your initial burst of speed from a circle jump, what you're going to want to do is hold forward and right and move your mouse right or forward and left and move your mouse left. The rate at which you're going to move your mouse is significantly lower than what you would do for a circle jump. You're only trying to move your aim over the course of a few seconds, maybe a couple of degrees. If you use the speedometer in Diabotical, this is actually one of the coolest tools I've ever seen in a video game ever. This will show you with a little percentage meter of how close you are to the optimum angle for basically 
the the difference in angle between where your character's movement vector is pointing and where your aim crosshair is pointed. There is an optimum angle there where you're going to generate the most speed per unit of time while strafe jumping, and this little percentage meter is going to show you how good of a job you're doing. So, as a beginner, don't worry too much about it, try not to suck, and you're doing just fine. When you're really comfortable with it, you've been doing it for hundreds of hours, then you can start really looking at, okay, am I hitting 90 plus percent on my strafe jump acceleration on average like that you can start worrying about that then but for now as the basics what you're gonna do do that circle jump to start get moving down a long hallway you're gonna hold forward and left move your mouse left just a little bit watch that ups meter grow as you do a couple of strafe jumps you're gonna notice your character is starting to drift off to the left as well so you can start switching by holding forward and right move your mouse to the right and you'll start strafe jumping in that right direction instead you can balance every other jump. You're going to go left, right, left, right. You can do two left, one right, two left, two right. You can change it up a whole lot. The direction that you're going on each jump doesn't really matter. But the thing that does matter is that what you're doing is over the course of your character being airborne, you are making a smooth movement with your mouse in one direction. What you don't want to do is cut your mouse and switch directions in the middle of your strafe jump, assuming that your goal is maximum speed. What you want to do is when your feet touch the ground for that instant where you have to hop, that is when you want to move your fingers on your keyboard and switch from forward and left to forward and right or vice versa. And that's when you want to start moving your mouse in that uh, that equivalent direction that you're trying to air strafe, quote unquote. So this is the fundamentals. I know it's kind of a lot. It's kind of convoluted. You might need to watch and listen a couple of times, but... Once you start getting it in practice, it's actually a very, very simple thing. It's just as simple as forward and right, or move your mouse right, forward and left, move your mouse left. The thing that is a little difficult about it is learning the speeds and the rates and the things that are comfortable for you given your sensitivity, but you will learn, you will get good at it, and it doesn't take very long. This is very important. You should practice this a lot, and I hope that you have learned to go quite a lot faster in your own gameplay. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon. Take care.